Alright, so our character can run and jump, double jump and all that, but let's set up these bouncing mushroom jump pads. So, we'll set it up in a way to where if you've already double jumped, it'll refresh it to where you can double jump again, and they'll have that little bouncing animation and play a little sound effect. So the sound effect is from a place called freesound.org. So freesound.org, and the one you just search sounds, and I typed in bounce and it brought this up by just invoke. Uh, you will have to create an account, but it's a free account. They don't charge anything. But it's really handy little uh, sound effect. So back in our project, in the blueprints folder, I'm going to right click create a folder called platform pieces and this is basically where all our stuff like that will go the jump pad the rotating platforms the moving pads all that so I'm gonna open that up I'm gonna right click create one more folder called launch pad I almost wanted to call it launch pad McQuack <laughs> stupid right alright so once you download that sound effect you find wherever it's stored and just import it just like that. It's a drag and drop because it's already a, a w sound wave, dot wave, dot wav, whatever you call that. Then the next thing we want to do is right click and create a blueprint class. Blueprint class is all of the interactables that you'll have uh, in your level. So it's anything that's going to need to have blueprint code in it. So like these are all static mesh back here, so they don't do anything even if you interact with them, but blueprints can have all kinds of fancy features. So we're going to create an actor, and I'm going to call it launchpad underscore bp. So what we're going to be using for the launchpad is from the advanced village pack. So I'm going to go there under the mesh folder. And I'm going to find, this is the mushroom I used last time. You'll notice it's a little small, but it'll be alright. So now back to the launch pad. We'll double click and open that up. And in the components tab on the left, we can hit this add button. But a quick little trick, the reason I drag this out is I can right click it and go to browse to asset. And this will automatically take you to it and highlight it in your browser. So in the launch pad, with that highlighted in the content browser, if I go to add and go to static mesh in the drop down folder, you'll see it already says SM mushroom variable variety 5 or whatever. So if I click that, it'll automatically bring that in. So I'm just going to call that pad. And I am going to set it size, because if we drag this out, it looks big in that folder. But if I drag it out, it's the same size. So you can kind of play around with values, but the ones I found worked was on X5, Y5, Z3. The transform scale, this is how you can make it bigger, smaller, etc. This is the rotation of it, and this is the location inside this graph. It won't affect anything outside of here. Other, well, it will, it'll move the mesh, but the, the blueprint actor will still be in the same place. So you see the location negative 591 5130 so if I move this in here and then compile it still has the same even though oh, I didn't hit compile I did hit compile where'd you oh oh <laughs> it was hiding under the camera so the actor is still in the same place but the pad has moved but we want it just centered, so I'm going to put it back to zero. Then what we want to add, with the static mesh highlighted, we can add another component called a sphere, sphere, or that's not how you spell that, sphere collision. This is basically what will tell the blueprint actor, hey, the player hit us, what are we supposed to do? This has all the the collision functionality that we'll need. So I'm going to set its radius to 100. 
so you can make it as big or as little as you want a hundred works for me and then I'm gonna position it just right at the top just so it right just overlaps right there so that's pretty much all we got to do on this side of things so in the event graph we want to highlight that sphere I'm gonna get rid of all of this so highlight that sphere and in the details panel at the very bottom you'll see this event graph and you can add all kinds of different events based on different overlap uh, functions. So the one we want is the begin overlap. So it's this one, I'll click that right there. And on begin overlap we want to find out if it's the player so we're gonna cast from the other actor. This uh, registers the other actor that's overlapping it so we will cast to the player blueprint, excuse me. And the first thing we want to do is find out has the character double jumped? Because if they have, we want to be able to reset that. So if they have double jumped, then we will set flipped back to false. kind of clean it. Oh, uh, you can add these reroute nodes. You can either like drag off and type in add reroute node or you can just double click on an existing uh, spaghetti wire thing and it'll add just like that. It helps to clean up blueprints. So if they have flipped then we'll let them flip again. If not then we just well, either way, we want to launch. Uh, we want to drag from the player blueprint and launch character. So you'll have to drag off from where you cast, and then it'll let you launch. So with this one, we want to do an override of all of them, X, Y, and Z. And then I'm going to set this to, like, a 1,000. Now from the true where we set the flipped back to false, we want to hook that up so that it feeds no matter what, it always gets here. So we'll compile that real quick, drag him out, and then let's just make sure that works. Yeah, she's jumping now. But you notice that the mesh doesn't move, so it doesn't really look all that, that great, right? Oh, and she's hard to control in the air. So we'll fix that too, but let's let's finish with the launch pad first. So we also want it to play that. Oh, that's loud. I'm sorry. Uh, we want it to play that sound effect whenever she jumps on it. So right after launch character, we want to spawn sound at location. The location we want is wherever the blueprint actor is at. So we will just right click and get actor location leave it to self because we want it to register wherever this current actor is at and the sound we want to use is hey, right there at the top of the list that works now one thing to keep in mind is you can adjust the volume right here and you don't want to blow your players ears out so I'm gonna set this to like 0.1 so let's test that real quick yeah, she jump in. But you notice that the mesh still isn't moving. So what we can do is we can right click and create a custom event called bounce. And then one more custom event. Oh, okay. Unbounce, I guess. That works. But we'll move this all the way down here. And after the spawn sound location, you want to call the bounce function, the first one that you set up. So down here, we want to add a timeline. So right click and type in timeline. And I'll call it shrink, I guess. What a timeline is, it's a graph that allows you to affect variables over time that we can adjust with an alpha setting. 
So right now it doesn't have anything, but let's double click and open it up and you'll see nothing. Okay, uh, we'll add a float track. If you add a float track, then this graph will appear. There are other tracks that we'll get into at another point, uh, but this is the one we need right now. So when you create the float track, it'll have this where you can name it. I'm going to call it alpha because it's the alpha. The jokes will only get worse as I get more comfortable recording. I'm sorry. So the length, I'm going to set it to about 0.15 because it's a quick when you like if you jumped on something like a trampoline or something that springs you up like that it would be a quick transition so all right so on the graph I'm gonna right click and add a key to the curve float a key is uh, when it fires through this timeline it'll look for that key and the value at the time and then go for, it'll start there and we want it to end at another value so well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, we'll add another curve float, and we want to set its time to 0.15. That way, it's the entire length of the timeline. And its value is going to be 1, because the alpha that we're going to need is going to be from 0 to 1 to adjust from where it's at to where it's going. It'll, it'll, you'll, you'll understand better once I get through here. I'm going to box select both of them like that, and then use this button to zoom to fit. Yeah, but we don't want it to be just a straight line like this, because then it'll be... Uh, it, it, we want it to be a smoother transition between the two values we're going to establish. So if you right-click one of the keys, it'll pop up with this list that says Key Interpolation. Interpolation is the way it flows from one to the other. So right now it just has a linear, so it'll just go at a consistent rate from 0 to 1 across that time. But if you click auto, the hell? Auto? Auto? The hell are you doing? Why ain't you, why ain't you autoing? Hmm. Strange. Usually when you, uh, Usually when I do that, it kind of, um, you know, autos out, smooths out like that. That's weird. Okay, that, may, that might be a, a, a malfunction on the engine or something. I'm not sure. But if it does that to you, also, you can grab one of these edges and just line it up with that line. So I'm going to zoom in real close so I can make sure I got it. Close enough, at least. Now I'll just drag it down. Good enough. And now you'll see it kind of has a little a flow to it. So, I really wish that auto would have worked, but I'm not going to complain too much. So now, back out in the event graph, we'll hook the bounce to play, the unbounce to reverse. And what we want to update is the size of the actor. So we want the we want it to kind of compress or look like it's compressing. So I am going to right click and hit set or type in set actor scale 3D. I think it was that one. Let me double check my notes. A relative scale. Okay, so we want it to be the relative scale. Get out of here. We don't need you. Set actor relative scale. 3D. So we'll hook the update up to this because over this course of time we want it to update the scale and the scale that we want it to update will drag off and we want to lerp. Now, lerp will take in our alpha variable, but it'll kind of flow between two different variables. So it'll like start at one and then go to the next one. So we'll hook the alpha right here because that is what will affect the timeline. And its scale, even though we set the mesh to 553, it's the actor scale is still 111 because it's the overall blueprint and not just the one component. 
So for A, which is where we start, we want it all to be 1. And then for B, which is where it's going to, we'll set it to... I'm going to set it real low just so it's more visible. And then we want from after it's done, once it's finished, we want to call our unbounce event so that it'll fire back through but in reverse and go from this to this in the same amount of time. So we'll compile that and test it. Whoa. All right, so 0.25 is a bit small, but you get you get the idea. So you can kind of play around with the value. I'm gonna set it like 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and then that ought to be more. Yeah, there we go. Looks good. Now let's fix our character's ability to jump through the air more more controllably, because the platformer, you really want good control over the character. So in the player blueprint, under the character movement, past the walking, pa oh no, in the jumping and falling, you'll see air control. This basically, just like it says, will is your ability to control the character in the air. So I'm going to set it to one, giving us full control in the air, uh, which most games would probably be a little bit too much, but since we adjusted her acceleration down, there'll still be a little bit of a delay but it'll still have a good amount of controllability. And let's see, I can double jump, land, double jump again. Yeah, so it's working pretty good. So now you can do some basic platforming stuff. Oh, I missed. Yeah, so pretty simple and hopefully a lot of fun. So next we'll start setting up ow, um, collectibles. So like coins and gems. And uh, so yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.